Hi, this is Jake Brown, host of the forthcoming streaming television show About the Authors TV. We were saddened today to learn of the passing of a lion in the world of legal defense, legendary attorney F. Lee Bailey. Whether it was Dr. Sam Shepard, the original inspiration for the Fugitive TV series and movie. Mr. Bailey, how can a man be in jail 10 years and just now be proven innocent or be released from jail? Because our system has some serious flaws in it. So how does freedom feel to you, sir? Ecstatic. Or Patty Hearst, the Boston Strangler, Sid Vicious, and most famously in the trial of the century, O.J. Simpson. Now, <clears throat> I think you've described for us the places that you went before Detectives Phillips and Furman arrived. Lee was one of the most celebrated lawyers in history, an author of For the Defense and The Defense Never Rests, two of the best-selling books by a lawyer of all time. Proudly, our forthcoming season features the final interview with F. Lee Bailey, a career and case-spanning one, which we're proud to share some clips from here right now. The role of private investigator is the best lead-in to becoming a trial lawyer that you can have, and I shove everybody in that direction if they come to work for me. Um, if your investigator is good enough, most any lawyer will do. If you've got the evidence and it's sufficient to bury the opponent, you don't need a lot of gilded language to drive it home. It's the cases which are very close and the um, evidence is dicey that <clears throat> it really makes a difference to look under every stone. But that is my philosophy. Um, I do still. A lot of consulting with lawyers who hand me the file and say, am I ready to go to trial? And I'm apt to say, you're not ready to take your diapers off yet. Uh, you haven't got enough in this file to win a traffic case. Now let's go back and see what you might be able to prove. And I call investigators in immediately and get out and see so, so, and so. But it is a useful, extremely useful, I think, foundation for whatever goes in the courtroom. The problem is that most lawyers go in without it, try their cases as if they didn't have it, and often get results they didn't expect because of that. I had been sought out by an author who covered the case. He worked for the Chicago Tribune. <clears throat> he was also a lawyer. And he wrote a bestseller called The Shepherd Murder Case. He came to the Polygraph Institute, where by that time, as a result of the first case, they couldn't find any lawyers either. So to teach legal aspects of polygraphy. And he came over to the school and said, you got a lawyer works here that might be willing to take on a tough case. And they said, well, we got a lawyer. We are in our bed is to take on anything. So he said the Shepherd family would like to meet me for the sole purpose of getting a commutation. And I took the book with me and flew to Cleveland. By the time I got to Cleveland, I'd finished the book. It was clear to me beyond any doubt this guy could not have committed the murder in two, indeed two justices uh, of the Ohio Supreme Court had said the state proved him innocent with their own evidence. Well, that was pretty inspiring stuff. So I just said, Sam, one way or another, I'm going to get you out of here. And sure enough, and he didn't believe me. Well, I was far too young to even be sitting there, let alone getting him out of a sentence he'd done for 10 years. Because I see being scared of military flight training. They almost killed me twice. At you don't have to worry much about cops, lawyers, and judges. Uh, these guys are deadly and they didn't get you. Um, that's a fair statement. I don't know anything in this world I would be afraid of, even things that go bump in the night. Now, slice that away a degree. You get anxiety, you bet. The reaction, protection, all those things. But I never sit and shudder, supposing Darth Vader comes around the corner. Who it is, I'll kick his ass. But it was not limited to that. The further I dug into it, the more I discovered that this case was a travesty. I mean, nobody played by the rules. Uh, certainly the newspapers set out 
and made no bones about it. They got him convicted. Uh, he was never allowed to have anyone investigate the crime scene until the trial was over. That's pretty hard to apply your good investigative techniques to see anything. Jurors talk to each other during deliberations, which is the biggest no-no in the jury system. Usually an automatic mistrial. And there was one other item. To sum it up, Judge Carl Weinman, who wrote the definitive opinion on Shepard, the Supreme Court did not. Uh, they dealt with only one aspect, and that is the trial judge's failure to control the press. <clears throat> Carl Weinman, who was um, a lion of a man, unfortunate to have met him, said um, that <clears throat> this case uh, has five independent constitutional violations in it, any one of which would justify release. Taken together, they are a travesty of justice. Well, that was pretty strong language coming out of Ohio. And, Sensitivity in Ohio back in those days, 64, 5, and 6, was still pretty much polarized on Shepard. And uh, you could find a lot of, of opinions both ways. Nothing as bad as OJ. We can all say guilty. Uh, but <clears throat> it was an uphill fight. That was on the left hand, on the right hand. And I am left-handed, but I keep the right one on the right hand. I had evidence from the first trial that was perjured off the wall, and I just had fun dancing their witnesses around. And the jury had no trouble concluding that Shepard didn't kill his wife, and probably the next-door neighbor did. And everywhere you turned, there was no trouble. Patty was accused of blowing up 16 patrol cars with dynamite, a number of police stations, two bank robberies, and machine gunning into a crowd. She got a total of three years, which is considered a pretty workmanlike job. But she should have been acquitted. And if we had gotten acquitted with the Hibernia Bank, the next one would have been tough because the Hibernia Bank happened right after she was kidnapped. The other murder happened, uh, the other bank robbery was 20 months later. Yeah. Well, the defense of brainwashing was unexplored then. All the psychiatrists that were worth a damn spoke with the under compulsion, including two appointed by the court, and uh, a couple that I hired. However, when the judge allowed the prosecutor to force her to take the fifth on a murder case that he had already ruled out. Otherwise, I would not have put her on the witness stand. Well. With that reversal, the worst thing I've ever had a judge do to me in the course of a trial, and sadly, in this case, it wasn't malicious. The judge was too sick to the bench, and indeed, he died right after the verdict came in and never got to sentence her, but it is apparent to me that a law clerk who was very much aligned with the prosecution persuaded him to change his mind, said, okay, you can ask for that because I had relied on that not happening. It should have been grounds for a new trial, but on the other hand, anybody wearing a black robe in San Francisco that does anything for Patty Hearst is going to be suspected of skullduggery. Lee, rest in peace. You'll be missed. And thank you so very much for being part of About the Authors TV.